lot of people come to us asking, how do we go through the process of setting up an LC and then transmitting it to the correspondent bank? What we're going to do in this session is talk about the whole process, what is involved, and the KYC process we go through as well. So the first of all, let's look at the first slide. In this step, we receive the pro forma invoice, which is the contract between the buyer and seller. In this particular process, each buyer will typically be receiving an invoice of a different format. And here we have the first challenge in making sure that all the data required for a pro forma invoice is contained absolutely in a form that we can use to then generate the letter of credit. Particular instances mean that we need information about the goods, how they're arriving, how they're being transported, what are the delivery dates, what are the expiry dates of this particular transaction. We need to know who the beneficiary is, we need to know account details. So from the example that you'll see, there is a very clear definition of all the data that's required from this instrument. Step one, continued. In this particular section, we're looking at the party details. That means we need to know if it's a transshipment, if it's a partial shipment, the currency, and absolute details of the conditions of this particular transaction. When we get to generate the SWIFT message, there'll be a number of conditional fields, so specifically 45, 46, and 47, that we'll talk about in a little more detail as the next slides come around. But it is absolutely key that we need the selling bank detail so that payment can be instructed to them when the transaction comes to its logical conclusion. Step two. The next part of the process is that Euro Exim Bank create the first draft of the instrument. And that is gathering the information from the pro forma invoice and ensuring we follow the SWIFT standards and syntax so that we can create the correct instrument. Whether that's a letter of credit, an MT700, a third party letter of credit, an MT710, or a standby letter of credit, MT760. And again, this terminology will become more familiar the more instruments that our customers use. But the formats of each of these instruments are fundamentally different, and each one uses very specific field names, tags, and syntax, and spellings to make sure that any bank anywhere in the world understands exactly the content of that particular transaction. Step three. When we get to this point, we have created the first draft internally. And our role is then to send that transaction, that information contained in the specific format, to the applicant, the buyer. At this point, the buyer will then look at the detail again and ensure that they're happy with the content that's put into those fields of information. They will then approve this message and we move to the next stage. Step 4A, KYC compliance. KYC, know your customer, due diligence, anti-money laundering regulation is key to ensuring that we have the correct detail, the correct customer, and to make sure that all the documents are held in the correct fashion. KYC is a very, very large process. It takes a huge amount of internal resource also to make this happen correctly. So we'll be asking about identity, we'll be asking about companies, about individual data, about, for example, financials of a company, because we're dealing with companies as opposed to individuals. Now, the important thing here as well, we need notarized documents, that is third parties certifying that the provenance of those documents is correct and can be attributed in a legal fashion should it be necessary if any problems occur later with transactions. So there are a whole set of specific KYC details, a set of details regarding the financials, 
and about the instrument itself. Also at this stage, we are involved in the process of looking at sanctions, whether perhaps the goods are sanctioned by a particular country, by a particular geography overall, whether the client is sanctioned and not allowed to do that transaction, and even currencies. So there are many different areas that we need to look at to ensure the, the validity of identity and the assurance that the actual transaction is not only legal, but it can be taken to its logical conclusion. Step 4B. Once we've been through the entire KYC process and we have all the documents necessary, including the passports, etc., if everything is going according to plan and everything checks out correctly, we will then issue our invoice for our fees. Now this could be for issuance of that instrument or relaying through a third party institution as well. If we take on the risk, obviously the fees that we'll be charging will be higher than if we're merely relaying without responsibility or liability. The key point here is that our charges must be paid in advance, in full, before we commit to sending any messages across the SWIFT network. Step five, the issuance process. At this point, we take the created SWIFT message and send it through our counterparties to the bank of the beneficiary. And that is when the MT700, 710 or 760 physically moves over the SWIFT network, instructing that this transaction is going ahead. The next step, goods are then transported. As we know, this could be by ship, which can take a number of weeks to move, by air if it's smaller, and by rail as well. And we're experiencing more trades taking place with the one belt coming from China through Europe into London with trains with multiple goods on board. So it's not just shipping involved here. There are many different countries, many different players, importers, freight forwarders, insurers, cargo, docks, etc. So many different players in the market involved in the physical movement of the goods themselves. And that needs to be tracked as we go. Step seven. This is when the goods are physically at the dock potentially and need to be released, for which there need to be documents involved, such as the bill of lading, insurance certificates, origin certificates, inspection, etc we receive the documents from the beneficiary bank. We will then go through and look to make sure that the conditions of the letter of credit are absolutely adhered to when we receive all our documents. So for example, if it requires th one original and three copies, we expect to see four documents in the bundle that comes to us. And again, that's all part of the process of the internal KYC and compliance department to make sure the transaction can move correctly. In step eight, we verify every step of the process. So again, if in field 47, which is a conditional field within the letter of credit, it says we need a certificate of origin signed by a particular institution, we are checking that it is absolutely compliant in that form. The reason is because there could be discrepancies which can lead to rejection of that transaction in its entirety, so completely. So we have to be sure that everything lines up correctly with all the conditions of the LC. So we're looking at export licensing, export declarations, insurance documents. Do they match what's required for the letter of credit? Step nine, if all the documents are correct, there are no discrepancies, there is no reason to reject, we will then issue what is called an MT754. 
an acceptance of the terms and conditions of that particular LC. On the other hand, if it does not pass all of the checks that we do with that particular document, we will then issue an MT734 rejection notice. For step nine, we have to be absolutely clear that all the terms and conditions are abided with and the two message types, the MT754 accept or the 734 advice of refusal are absolutely clear in their message to the counterparty operation. In step 10, if there is an issue with some goods which may be stuck, a condition which needs to be changed, we're in a position to issue an MT707 amendment. And again, what we have to do is provide all the information in a swift message format, again, a very clear with syntax and specific spellings and field tags to make sure that the counterparty bank is fully aware of the particular conditions to change. This could be a change of expiry date. It could be a change, not of a beneficiary, but a particular term in the contract itself. So, but if there is a fundamental change in the tenor or the meaning of this letter of credit, then a cancellation would be issued and a new letter of credit would need to be issued afterwards. Step 11, this is the time when payment takes place. So we expect the applicant to make payment to the beneficiary and into the beneficiary bank. The goods are typically with them and depending on the timing of the transaction, typically 90 days, 180 days or 360 days, the transaction will then need to be paid for at that point. And therefore, goods have arrived safely payment is made for those goods. In conclusion, we have a number of steps, very simple steps to the process. So if we just go over those very, very quickly again. Number one, client sends us a pro forma invoice. Step two, we create the draft, which we then send in a specific format to the applicant. Step three, the applicant approves that transaction. Then we send them step four, the indemnity documents, the KYC, compliance, AML, sanctions checking, security checking on that particular client. They then have those notarized by either a legal representative or perhaps a magistrate or someone like that proving identity, sending all the documents back to us we go through a compliance process and if approved by legal and compliance here, we will then issue the terms of their requirements in the letter of credit document, the MT700, to the beneficiary bank. Goods are then shipped and then we receive all the bill of lading and documents regarding the shipping from the beneficiary bank. Once that's done, we verify those records against the original letter of credit. Again, if all is correct, we send the MT754 acceptance. If it's not correct and we refuse based on too many discrepancies, we send an MT734 advice of refusal. And again, through the life of the transaction, should the terms change in any way, but not to a great extent, we will then be able to issue an MT707 amendment message, which will just alter a number of the smaller conditions there without affecting the tenor or meaning of the LC. Well, we hope you found this part of it interesting at this point. So that's the whole process that we go through. We're delighted to help you if you have any questions. And of course, we look forward to your business.